Well, welcome to the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, we're going to be talking about that uh, financial advice that you would give to your younger self. To join me for the discussion, I've got Derek Chase from Derek Chase and Associates, licensed insolvency trustee serving Vancouver Island, Sunshine Coast, and the BC North Coast. Derek, thanks for being here. Oh, hi, Wayne. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yeah, I think we've uh, kind of touched on these kind of wisdom and advice before on some of our podcasts, but today we're really going to dive into it. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we don't want anybody feeling bad because the perfect time to start learning about finances is right now. Yeah, for sure. I I would say that it's never too late to start and start now, start small, start today. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, that's the the urgency to it. You can't think about years gone by, but you can only look forward. So, um, Let's talk about some important things. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like just stock investing or anything like that. And nobody would have known what would have happened with certain companies. So mm-hmm. you can't uh, beat yourself up over it. I remember somebody mentioning that to me. Hey, would you have invested with Microsoft at the very beginning if you'd known? And I'm like, well, yeah, if you'd known. But if you had no idea and you looked at the picture, you'd say, oh, they, this group of hippies, this Bill Gates guy, I don't know. That's the short answer to today's podcast is what do you tell your younger self is, you know, buy Apple stock and uh, you just can't beat yourself up like that because you could also go the other way. I I remember uh, a joke making the rounds not too, too long ago was how to become a millionaire in Kelowna and that's to show up with 2 million and, uh, you know, lose a bunch in the stock market. So (laughs) it can go both ways. True. Okay. So where do you want to start for today? I mean, there, it's obviously important to start early. Why is it important to start early? You know, I think it's just the the power of time is um, is the key part of that piece of advice. And if you're um, you see a lot of a lot of articles that say, "Oh, I'm 50 years old and I don't have anything saved for retirement. What should I do? Or is it too late to start saving?" And you know, all those questions can be avoided if you if you did start early, but the, the hard part about that, I think, is it's just so abstract when you're young. It, when we sometimes talk with people and and they say, oh, I wish I'd have look, had this taught to me when I was in high school or or when I was younger. And, you know, a lot of it probably was spoken about, but it's just so not real at that point. But it quickly becomes real when you start having to deal with your first uh, bits of adulthood there. So starting early uh, and utilizing the power of time on your side is uh, a real, real big thing that if that could just sink in, I think a lot of people would be way better off by saving that super small amount, but starting early and letting time be your friend. Mm -hmm. I know with uh, my kids, we really stressed, and I don't know where I saw this stat, but it was something like, if you could put $2,000 away, at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And I think it was for about five five or six years. And then you not even invest anything after that, you would have like a million dollars by the time you're 65. So if you get that 12,000 start, you're doing great. But, yeah. and I look back at my kids, when I was their age, I had, I had a motorcycle to buy. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And yeah. I, I, so, you know, or a car, I wanted to buy a car. It wasn't, I wasn't taught this stuff and and I did somebody did pass me a copy of The Wealthy Barber when I was I believe 21 and uh mm-hmm. I read it but I wish I would have acted on it so there's advice for our younger selves. Yeah, that's uh that's a good point because even if you are doing that early savings and I have seen that similar type of predictions and charts and uh, it's true. But when you start saving early and you build up some money, you have to you have to merge that up with the discipline to, to let it keep going because life will pull at you and, and want you to buy some sort of toy that, you know, maybe you don't need and, and spend a little bit too much on it. And then it sets you back for your overall savings. So it's, it's a balancing act, I guess, but mm-hmm. certainly having that nest egg there at an early age will certainly get you on a, a better path than, than not having it there. And all we can do is really, uh, you know, teach our children um, and then hopefully they can teach their children and we just keep hopefully getting this better and better with growing wealth. I would agree with that. And certainly the teaching aspect is interesting. And 
how is it the best way to start? And, and that's letting people handle money, I think is the best way to start. And if you're a, a teenager today or, and you've never really handled money or had to make choices around it, it's going to be difficult. Um, I remember hearing someone comment recently that qu- the question was, where, where does money come from? And the answer was, well, it comes from the bank machine, <laughs> but you know, it, it doesn't. And, and when you look back in time and you think of the, the value of having the newspaper route or the babysitting type income and, and, or even an allowance or some very modest amount of cash flow to manage and save and just really make decisions with, just start some, some good learning process there. So starting early, starting with a bit of cash flow to make choices with, uh, I, think, I think that's part of walking a, a responsible financial life. Do you talk about retirement when it comes to teaching kids? You know, it's hard because it's just so far away and kids are immortal in their own eyes. And they, it, it's, it's hard to project when you are in your teen years or even early 20s. It's hard to really think that far ahead and, and try and understand what life is going to be like then. So, I mean, you can just talk about it and, um, you know, for those people that do understand it or get it, then they're, they're well ahead of the game. Um, but those who don't, I mean, it's just going to take them, take them longer to get going, as you mentioned in your earlier example, and be very difficult to catch up. Mm -hmm. Who should you consult? Uh, I think if they're so, if you're so fortunate to have, uh, someone in the financial advisor capacity in your circle of family or friends or a a CPA or really anyone that's uh, got some business experience. I I think those are all good candidates to talk to. And I would encourage people not to be shy about that because I think a lot of people that would be asked those questions would be more than willing to, to make some comments about what's a smart move to do or, or what's a good thing to get ready to help me with my finances. And I think people are generous in general in, um, in Canada and in BC. So I, I think especially generous with advice. So I think if you can get over the uh, sort of the being afraid to ask aspect of that and, and actually make the ask for advice, uh, I think it would work. I would think that it's almost an honor for when you ask somebody, you know, especially if the kids get to, you know, because mom and dad are one thing, but when they get to talk with somebody else uh, about money, the, the person they're asking can oftentimes feel like it's an honor to actually have somebody young that they're able to maybe share just a little bit of wisdom with. Yeah, they hear mom and dad a lot. <laughs> and so having that fresh voice is uh, important, I think. And I know certainly the times that I've been asked by different people for just random financial questions. I'm more than happy to to spend some time and and give them at least what I can give them right at that moment without having to do any deep research or just you yeah. know, some general off the cuff sort of information. And I think it's well well appreciated and even basic financial information as far as you know tax free savings accounts or RSPs or investing in stocks or, you know, EFTs or mutual funds, or there's a lot of lingo out there. And so to educate yourself about that, part of that process is just asking the question, um, impressed that you read the book. I mean, that's great. Um, the wealthy barber books, I, I, I recommend that to people. It's educating yourself on just the terminology will put you in a good spot. And so when you do get to the point where you're actually making some decisions about investments, you won't be intimidated doing that. You'll understand what the person that you're interacting with perhaps to make that investment is, is saying, and it's takes that level of intimidation out and, and it's helpful. You know, it it really is. And don't feel intimidated because there's people that, have been, you know, fairly successful and they don't understand some of these different terminologies. In fact, just today, I was quite surprised with having a conversation with somebody and she mentioned dividends and she's like, Mm. I don't even, you know, I've heard of them, but I don't even really know what they are. And she was in her fifties and, and somebody had mentioned that it, it helped them to retire. So really it's all ages. 
It is. And it's, it's never too late. Like we started off with, I, I think if this has been on your mind, then start asking for advice, start asking the questions, start uh, reading. I mean, there's a lot of material available to read to, to talk about uh, different types of investment income. And uh, yeah, on the same, on an, perhaps on a similar vein, you know, you do have to have your antennas up so you're not going to get scammed by somebody giving you advice. And mm. I would certainly recommend uh, that if it sounds too good to be true motto, it, it is. And so you don't watch out for that, but certainly doing some basic research through uh, the library or online and asking someone that you trust. I mean, those are good, good ways to get you going. And I just can't stress how important that is because let's take an example of someone who wants to save money and they decide that they're going to save money at one of our chartered banks, GICs. That's how they're going to do it. And they diligently did that over decades. Well, if that same person would have maybe taken some of that money and just bought some of that bank stock it would be a, tremendous difference in their overall asset value if they fast forward out 30 years. So gaining that understanding, um, so vital. It's not, it's not something that's difficult to understand. And it's, it's not something you need a PhD in economics to really grasp. It's getting that basic terminology around dividends or interests or uh, other types of investment income and where it comes from whether it's tax sheltered or not tax sheltered. I mean, these are all things that uh, someone in their late teens can easily understand. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, different assets and, and maybe what might be best. Do you want to break down a couple of those ideas for us? Well, I think if you're starting, um, it depends when you're starting, I guess. If you're starting it with that teenage job, I, I think money in the money in the mattress is fine. You know, that's... Uh, that's a good place to start just to have some, some cash on hand. And we like to encourage people just to build up a sort of a cash buffer of a couple months of living expenses, maybe. Uh, but then when you're at that point and you're saying, well, Hey, I, I should really start to uh, make some longer term investments here. Uh, that's when I think you get choosing between assets because different assets have different time horizons. And if you think you're going to really need that money soon, then you might not want to tie up the, the money in a long-term investment. So it's hard to, hard to say for each person what the best asset to invest in might be. But I think you want to consider what your time horizon is. And if your time horizon is long, then you can be a bit more risky and be able to put the money in an asset that you might not be able to get it back right away, mm -hmm. whether that's locking it in for a couple of years or uh, I think for the, for the starting out person, certainly you get very little interest income now. So some sort of exchange traded fund is typically a, a go-to type of investment now. And the reason that they've become popular is the management fees on them are very low. So that's another, another thing to learn about in your reading is, you know, what are you paying on your management fee for that investment? And for instance, if you're paying somebody three or 4% a year to manage those funds, that's a lot different than paying someone a half a percent or 1%. It might not sound like a lot, but when you take that out over time, it becomes a big number mm -hmm. and so an exchange traded fund or an ETF is probably got the lowest and then it, it just goes up from there and there's different types of exchange traded funds. So for different areas of the economy that you can invest in. So I, I think that's good for, for starting out. If you're further down the track and you've already got some investments, then you definitely want to be consulting with someone who's got good experience in the investment area for, um, for how to blend those different investments into different risk categories. So it depends, I suppose, on the asset depends on what stage of life you're at and, and what your time horizon is. But in order to get that money to, to make the investments, uh, I think another area we should talk about, Wayne, is just planning planning a little bit 
for the long term in a, in the sense of planning for a year as opposed to a month or a paycheck. Okay, what does uh, that look like? Well, I asked some of my colleagues about this question. You know, what would you tell yourself if you were in your youth and about finances and just understanding the the need to plan ahead and plan for for a whole year instead of just staying in the immediate moment all the time because life comes at you fast as you know and the things that are unexpected can really set you behind so just try to understand or predict what's going to come up between now and a year from now and plan accordingly Mm -hmm. because if if you know that august is going to be busy with two birthday parties and a wedding you know it's going to be expensive plus kids to school in September. I mean, all those things are out there. They're just not here today for an expense, but they're coming. So it's, it's important to, to make those planning choices and then you're on a smoother path. So I think having that predictability to your finances and having the discipline to, to save something each month starting early, uh, I think those are all a good blend to keep a person on a strong financial path. And these days, the banks make it easier because they can simply withdraw it for you, put it into a different account, put it into a tax-free savings account, put it into anything really that you you want. So it automatically comes out. You never even see that. And I've talked about this many times on this podcast. Uh, We really made a big difference in our family's life when we calculated all the expenses for the entire year and then divvied that up per paycheck 26 times, okay, what do we need to set aside to make sure that every bill is taken care of? And that was, I I wish I'd done that, you know, 20, 30 years ago would have made a big difference. Yeah. Another key thing that you said there is that your family did that. And uh, we do see situations sometimes when there's only one person in the family that's on board with trying to do that planning and it's much more difficult. Oh yeah. If you can have your whole family buy into that and also use it as a teaching moment for the kids, I mean, you're way, way ahead of the pack in, in that regard. So good on you for, for doing that as a family. And then people have that awareness and they know there's some accountability there too, if they, yeah, if they don't follow the plan. (laughs) Well, it's funny because we're, we're at a point here where my son is just moving off You know, I'm going to be doing his first, you know, renting a place and he's got to take care of all of his expenses with his new job. And already I'm still sending out the little advice of, you know, maybe don't do the gym membership yet. Maybe don't do the climbing membership yet. Don't do this membership yet until you see what that monthly income is going to look like versus your expenses. And he's like, yep, already on it. So he was listening. He's listening. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We've got run out of time. Final advice you'd like to share with us? You know, I think everyone can do it. And it's just a matter of uh, taking the time to educate yourself with some reading and, and seeking out some wise counsel and, and you can do it. Absolutely. Derek, always great having you on the show. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You have a great day. Yeah, my guest today, Derek Chase from Derek Chase & Associates, licensed insolvency trustee. You can learn more. You can schedule a free consultation with Derek and the team at bankruptcytrusteebc.ca. Bankruptcytrusteebc.ca. And that's it for today's Debt Matters podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, if you want more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks very much for listening.